TV and we are going to uh, play a classical. So we're playing the Colorado Gambit. Uh, a lot of people don't like this opening, but I I enjoy playing it. It can give black a few positional weaknesses, but um, I think it is. So let's see how he responds to the Colorado Gambit. He pushes by. And uh, this is the Colorado Gambit declined when he pushes by. Uh, so we're challenging that pawn once again. So two main uh, choices that white can have. Uh, against both of them, we, we get a pretty good position. So it plays d4, which is interesting, but that uh, just loses the right to castle uh, instantly. So uh, because well, this is open, so we can take that. And now, I think we just have this option. So we can fiend keto this bishop, because it has no chance here. I don't think it does. So maybe bishop f5, knight, D, knight e7, like this. So bishop f5, and we are gaining a tempo on this pawn. So he plays bishop d3. I will give him doubled pawns. And then this. Alright, so if he plays check, then I think we can just move the king. Oh, actually, no, we, we want our knight there. So where do we go from here? Maybe we can just go king f7. I think that will be good, yes. Because we want our knight here and our bishop here. Or not, not there. There. That's where we want our bishop. So this is the development plan, and then we can bring our rook to this file, and then bring the other rook like this. So that is our plan. So we are gaining a tempo on that pawn. The uh, only way you can save it is rook to g1. It's the only way you can save it. You can also go bishop, okay. So that's the way you plays it. And then knight to e7. And then we're going to double the rooks on the, the E file. Yes. Let's do that now. Why not? Of course he's going to challenge us for the open file. That's what you need to do with rooks. You need to challenge the opponent's uh, ownership of that file. Now if I had gotten two rooks on here then it might have been a bit more difficult for him to do this but uh, actually no okay okay so um, I was thinking that uh, no, if I have to, I, so I do not want to trade here because then he's gonna take back with this rook I don't want to trade here and he's gonna take back and then he will have this open file and he could come to my seventh ring, so I don't want to trade here. Instead, I'm going to kick his bishop, take away the b5 square from him, and he moves it back. Uh, I don't think that's a very good. Um, so I'm just going to develop. 
So notice this rook is very passive. And I th think this is good. So we can see this pawn is weak. And no, okay. So after this, we can move this pawn back. Now he's attacking this pawn. Uh, bum, 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 bum. So we can win a pawn here, possibly. Although, we do have to keep in mind that that is pinned, actually, it is not. Uh, this pawn is pinned, though, and he is attacking it four times. And we only have it defended three times. So he's going to win that pawn. So that is not good. So we move the king... Uh, this is more towards the center, but I just like over here for some reason. I think this is... So, yes, I think this is what we are doing. So then, uh, I think he should definitely take this knight with the bishop. Because, number one, he will win a pawn. And he will have a very powerful pass. He already has a very good pass pawn. Uh, so he took... Do I want to take here first? Uh, I think I do. No. I think it will take here first. Yes. So we're gaining a tempo on his rook. My king is on the dark square. So we cannot do this. So now we have to take that. And... Now where to put this bishop? Where... Do we want to put this... Well, the bishop is on a very good diagonal. And the board is extremely open. So that is good. I think this will win a pawn. He has this check. But then I believe we just move the king here. Right? I think that's what we're gonna do here. And then he has no way to defend the spawn. Mm. Sorry, I'm talking in a bit of an accent. <laughs> so yes, this is one of the line, the lines where uh, Black can get a good position with the Colorado Gambit. Uh, my opponent here didn't play uh, one of the main lines, actually. Uh, he didn't play a very common line, but still we get good position out of the Colorado Gambit. Uh, Black often gets the bishop pair, or has the extra bishop. So, good thing we think about the move that we're going to play while the opponent is thinking about his move. That's a good tip you can use to save time. And we're also protecting this pawn, so that is good. Uh, he could be threatening to come here, but no, what this knight, because of course he has to defend the pawn. So, I can, actually this might have been better up here, yeah, I think that would have been better. Uh, to come, but now, uh, we don't, we want this pawn on our seventh rank. So where to go here, we just put the pawn here like this. So now we have weak light squares with our pawns, but our bishop can 
cover all those like this. Okay, now it brings the rook up, um, but we can just put the bishop, um, and we are threatening to come here and pinning his rook to his king, so that is our threat right now. And he properly moves it over there. Um, I think this is good. Just protect the pawn. And then we can possibly come up here. It's always important in the end game to centralize your king. It's extremely important to do that. And now the knight goes back. Uh, I think we can just put this here. And I don't think he can defend the spawn. Do I want to prevent this though? I don't think I can. I think this will just win our pawn back. Uh, and then if he comes here, our bishop is very strong. Um, there's no way he can defend this pawn. So we just get our pawn back. So unfortunately, we had to trade off our. Uh, very powerful uh, bishop, but we got our pawn back, and that is important. If you're a pawn up or a pawn down in endgame, uh, you have a very high chance of losing the game, unless your opponent's pawns are uh, doubled or something. But still, you have very um, high chance of losing the end game. So we have our rook on this file because we cut off the king from coming over to these pawns. That's a very important thing. You use your rook to cut off the opponent's king from coming into contact. So now the king is coming closer. But this allows us to come to his seventh rank. Yes. And now you can see the activity of this uh, rook that we are getting here. Just come back and we'll come down here. Try to get in this way. Uh. Other than that, this might be a draw. Um, I prefer if it wasn't because this uh, per this player is a little bit lower rated than I am. But we'll have to see. So we come over here, and now we are uh, attacking this pawn like this. Uh, however, if we take that pawn, then we lose this one. So now he plays this, and that loses a pawn instantly. That loses a pawn. So now you can see that we are a pawn up. So that is good. And our rook is protecting this pawn, and our king is protecting this pawn. So uh, that is very good. So if we come here. Uh, we're making our way closer to this pawn and with the pawn majority uh, We want our rook behind These pawns 
You want this root behind the pawns, like this. You want him back here, so that he can uh, begin to um, march forward. That is what you must do when you have a pawn end game like this. So you can see we're trying to get behind this pawn so we can push it all the way in. And as you can see, he's not cooperating. So we may be able to get a Lucina position or something. But you can see why it has the opposition. Black does, rather. So if we place uh, this move, then that, that uh, will just be met by this. And then we'll be attacking this pawn, and this pawn can get rolling. So now we can see that uh, this pawn can begin to go forward like this. So now if he takes, then we have two passed pawns. Uh, we have two pawns. And uh, I don't think his king's going to be able to stop both of them. So I think we have a one end game here. Like this. And then you have to keep in mind the opposition. So if the king moves here, then we take this spot. Because we want the kings to be opposite each other. So this is very important, and you can see we're moving here next. So this is interesting. We want uh, like this. That's what we want because we want the kings uh, one square apart from each other, and we want the opponents. We want the opponents. We want it to be the opponent to move. So it's very important that you get the opposition like this. So now we just corner him like this. So you can see that he's only one squares. Like this. And then he has to move here. So we come here. And you can see that. That's it. Good game. And he wants a rematch. Okay, we will offer a rematch. Alright, so we're white and we will go with d5, d4 rather. Queen's Gambit declined. Uh, interesting. Uh, okay. So we will maybe uh, allow him to get an isolated pawn. Yes. Okay. So he has an isolated pawn. So that is something to work with. Uh, that is something to work with here. Oh, I realized I could have won that pawn. I could have just won the pawn immediately. Uh, anyway, so let's put this bishop on the long diagonal, like that. Um, and then rook c1, bishop e2, castles, and rook d1. Um, we do have to keep, uh, we do have to keep this in mind here. And he plays bishop f5. It's a very strong move by black. Um, not gonna deal with that just yet. Uh, but remember that we do have this pawn is very weak. Uh, it does not have any pawn on the side of it supporting it. So that makes that pawn weak. Uh, and then it has two defenders and it has two attackers. Okay, now he's trying to get rid of it, which is the correct thing to do when you have one of these. Uh, so we will just get rid of, we will just exchange it off. And then if he plays rook here, then we just play bishop. And he's wanting to swap that 
the bishop. So we're gonna swap this off and then play bishop e2. Like this. And then castle before he gets a chance to pin our bishop. Like this. It's very important to do that. You cannot let your pieces be pinned to your uh, big pieces. You cannot let this happen. So again, the center of the board is wide open here. And if he chooses And if he chooses to swap this off, then I will have the two bishops. I will have the two bishops. And since the board is incredibly open here, then uh, the bishops are going to do slightly better than the knights. They usually edge out the knights in open positions. So he's trying to sacrifice here. Uh, I'm not sure how it's gonna work. Um, we're gonna just play King F1, and then maybe Queen Knight to D5. We're gonna try for a sacrifice. He does have this. Uh, Long diagonal. Uh, he's attacking my queen now. Uh, this is the only safe square for the queen. I don't want to block it with any. That uh, oh, I can play it here and try to exchange queens, because uh, you need to trade pieces as much as possible when you have material advantage. When you have material advantage, you need to trade pieces. Like this, so we can see here that we are trading pieces. And I see that he can easily um, win his piece back, and my king is going to be extremely vulnerable. Actually, no, maybe not. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So he has been. Uh, so see this knight is this bishop is protected by the knight. So now he's coming down here, right? And now he's coming down here. So I don't want to. Well, I guess I have to. My question is. Does he take with the rook? Actually, he cannot take with the rook. He cannot take with the rook. No, he can. Uh, I can take with the rook. Uh, no, that bishop cannot move. Well, he's going to get rooks on the seventh, so I play this. And now he comes here. Uh, and then, of course, he's going to take that, but he cannot. Look at this. Something to keep in mind. You can see the back rank is extremely vulnerable for the black. So, if he moves this bishop off of this angle, you can see that I'm going to have an instant checkmate. So that is something that we want to keep in mind. And he takes the pawn. Interesting. Uh, 
so I'm gonna offer to oh I cannot. Ugh. So we do this, right? Oh the rook is protected. Ugh. There's no point in doing that. But what I want to do is get the bishop off of this uh this diet this angle. I wanna get the bishop off of there. Okay, so now he takes, actually, we can see now the bishop is extremely open up. So now that we can move the pawn. Oh, I didn't even see that. Oops. Well, can't take with the bishop. Actually, he can. Okay, he took it with the rook, of course. Uh, and then I can move here. We can see that this bishop and this rook are going to be perfectly lined up to do this. So I'm going to offer that bishop. Huh. Maybe we can try this. So I do have this, remember? And that's it. Thank you for watching.